brain and the mechanics of prayer. Thus, we addressed this topic too. This being a recording, a statement seems appropriate. We frequently get together with a few friends here and have conversations, sometimes every day, sometimes a few days in a week. Our endeavor is to keep up to date with the latest scientific findings, medical developments, and all the technological advancements in the world to discern how they complement the teachings of the Quran and Rasul Allah, peace be upon him, to understand what the metaphorical and symbolic explanations of that area were actually alluding to in today's discoveries, which realities were they intended to symbolically represent. This is what I've dedicated my life to. My intention is not to be anybody's sheikh or a guru, spiritual leader, or savior. Thankfully, we are self-sufficient. We have no needs. Until this day, we haven't collected a penny from anyone. We didn't collect charity. We didn't form a foundation or a community. We stayed away from the public as much as possible. I can very comfortably admit that I have lived my whole life independently. I am not part of any organization or spiritual order or community. I am not a member of any association or institute. I have no ties to any society or establishment. I have no ties whatsoever. In fact, I hate the idea of being tied up so much that all of my shoes are moccasins. Even my shoes don't have any shoelaces. I detest the idea of being tied up. I have always lived a free life and preserved my freedom of thought. This said, my freedom of speech is impeded as I cannot freely share my knowledge. As people aren't at the level to understand this knowledge, I say there is no material thing in existence. Existence, by its essence and origin, is the manifestation of the Allah's knowledge and power attributes. Today we call this energy or data or even knowledge. But regardless of what we call it, we say there is only one existence, and that is Allah, the Ahad, and Samad. The Quran expounds the absolute truths that are absolutely relevant and valid throughout all times. However, it has done this through the use of metaphors and symbols due to the conditions of its time. So what we're saying is, let's decipher what these symbols allude to by examining science and technology in depth, and hence clarify the meanings of these teachings. But they say, you're degenerating religion, you are mixing religion with science. So, we're going to close our doors on the first of the Islamic month of Rajab, which is the beginning of the three holy months. We're going to close our doors with a final video about the essence of prayer and how it was practiced by the intimates of Rasul Allah, peace be upon him. May everybody's sheikh, guru, master, mahdi, etc. be blessed and sanctified. I wish the best for everyone. Anyway, let's get back to our topic. By the way, I just want to remind you all that all of these books, the key to the Quran of approximately 750 pages, the power of prayer, the truth of life. And lastly, the little booklet called The Beautiful Names, which is the introduction section of the key to the Quran. All of these can be downloaded for free on our website, www.ahmedalusi.org. Or, if you send the postage fee, our friends will post them to you if you prefer to have a hard copy. I completed writing the key to the Quran and waited two years to find someone who was willing to print and distribute it for free. 
The knowledge of the Quran, according to my understanding, cannot be used as a commercial merchandise for worldly profit. Those who do use the Quran to make worldly gains off it will be accountable and unable to carry this burden. This is how I see it. And that is why I have no material expectations from this. In fact, we don't even expect people to say thank you. As the requirement of our faith and servitude to Allah and Rasul Allah, peace be upon him, and in accordance to the lifestyles led by those who were the intimates of Rasul Allah, we give this knowledge out for free. Go to our website, all of our books, all of our publications are there. You can see for yourself what types of information we shared and the dates on which we disclosed them. And all of these are shared with all of humanity without wanting anything in return. Having said this, let's now go back to our topic. Let's clarify this subject now. Previously, I expounded on the automation mechanism of the brain. The structure called the brain is a composition of the manifested properties of Allah's names. The verse, we have created man in a most perfect fashion, corresponds to the creation of the brain. No human being can fully comprehend the value and utter magnificence of the brain, especially the most magnificent brain to have ever come to earth, the brain of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Nobody can fully appreciate his value and the universal realities that were expressed via his brain, the knowledge of the mechanics of the system he taught the Quran that was projected by his brain. Now, one of the most important and beneficial topics to humanity addressed in the Quran is prayer. In regards to prayer, the Quran says, pray and I will respond. That's it. Clear and simple. So if you make a prayer, your prayer will definitely be answered. There are no conditions in regards to time or place. Every prayer will most definitely receive an answer. You may say, okay, Ahmed Halusi, but you told us the brain was an automated mechanism which inherits genetic data from its parents, which then receives data from its environment, a mechanism that is constantly receiving, processing, and automatically generating an output. So, if it is such an automated mechanism, if Allah created this mechanism to function in this way, then we don't really have a choice but to receive and process the data as it comes. So what is the point of praying? Why should we pray or perform salat or engage in any kind of practice to enhance ourselves at all? This is the most important point, my friends. Now, we said the data goes into the brain and the brain processes the incoming data based on its existing database. If alongside the incoming data of air, things that have no pertinence to one's afterlife, the knowledge of the Quran and Rasul Allah, peace be upon him, also enters the brain, that is, in some way or another, from someone or from a book or some publication, if your brain receives the input data of your essence and reality is so, you have such and such capacity. Allah has created you on earth as a vicegerent. So in order to bring out 
and experience your vicegerency, understand and recite this prayer and engage in this kind of practice. If your brain has received this kind of message and understood it, or even if you didn't understand it, if you believed it, then when you pray, I just said, if you understood, i.e., when this knowledge is received by the brain and then synchronized with the previously existing data to yield its meaning, that is, if an awareness has been generated by the brain, then this awareness is automatically going to stimulate the desire to pray within you. In other words, the qualities pertaining to the names of your sustainer denoted by the brain is going to generate in accordance to the incoming data the desire to pray, the want to turn to Allah, to turn to Salat, and hence to turn to your essence and accomplish your ascension. These wants are then going to come back as feedback and re-enter the brain and get restored in the brain, this time taking you even further in correspondence to the incoming data. So every prayer that is outputted from here, every prayer generated by the brain will be re-inputted to the brain as feedback, hence getting a response i.e., your sustainer will respond to your prayers. Any contrary outcome is simply impossible. Therefore, prayer is your biggest and most powerful weapon in life. The verse, you cannot want unless Allah wants, refers to this reality, i.e., your brain generates the want to pray based on the data it receives and processes. You cannot want unless Allah wants, and as long as Allah wants, you will want, and whatever Allah wants shall be. So this is how this mechanism functions. Therefore, Every prayer you make will definitely get a response. But the most important thing about prayer is to define and verbalize your thoughts and wants clearly and distinctly. Repeating a particular prayer 1,000 times or 100 times is a different thing. That too is valid and has a place in the functioning of the brain. But this isn't what I want to talk about. That is a different topic altogether. I have explained this very openly and clearly in my book, The Power of Prayer. You can download it and read it from the internet. There is a very important subtlety one must be aware of in regards to the manifestation of prayer. I always advise people to pray in the following way. Wake up in the middle of the night, in a quiet and solitary place. Take ablution and perform two units of Salat. Then prostrate and stay in prostration. Or don't perform Salat, just take ablution and pray in prostration. Before beginning to pray, take care to repent first by confessing your wrongdoings and mistakes as much as you're aware of them. Whether it's, I lied today to save face or I had to double deal to not break someone's heart today, or 
I extorted someone's rights today. Allah, your sustainer within, is well informed of everything you've said and done. It is all recorded. So you might as well confess it all in prostration and then say, O oh my sustainer, cleanse me from all these inadequacies that I have confessed and all that I may have failed to confess. Free me from everything that I may inadvertently have taken up as a deity. Free me from directly or indirectly associating partners to you. Save me from living in imitation. Help me see and live according to the reality. Help me to live a life of faith and simplify for me the practices that are required by my faith. If you make this prayer after confessing your mistakes and you do this for 15 days periodically, you will definitely see a change in yourself. When I wrote The Mysteries of Man in 1985, I had said, invocation or the repeated chanting of words is such an interesting phenomenon, whether you believe it or not, even if you're an atheist, it will have an impact on the brain and bring about transformations within you. Later in 1989, this topic was published in The Scientific American. The article was about how the incantation of a particular word stimulates various sections of the brain. Wanton need to go into the details of it now. Suffice it to say, a similar situation is in effect with prayer. That is, when you make a prayer and confess your wrongdoings, when you say, O oh Allah, I engaged in treachery or hypocrisy or I lied, etc. That information is released by the brain then received again as feedback. This data, upon re-entering the brain, obstructs and inhibits the activities of the brain that are related to the formation of these wrongdoings. This is a mechanism of the brain. What the old used to call inculcation is also related to this. That is, Misconstrued behaviors that result from the already existing data in the brain are modified by new behaviors. Prayers, speech, actions, etc. resulting from the newly uploaded information to the brain. All the files that are valid in the brain get replaced with an invalid label, hence nullifying and concealing our faulty behaviors. This is the system of Allah that is effective in the brain. This is why prayer is the most important thing in a person's life. When we pray, we are all alone. We are alone with ourselves and we turn to our sustainer. Our sustainer within says, within your own selves, do you still not see? For he is present in our very soul, our being, our consciousness. Do we still lack the foresight to see this? Can we not see and recognize this truth? At this point of intimately turning to our sustainer, there is nothing in between, no obstacles.
Just as we are all alone with our sustainer at that intimate point of prostration and prayer, so too at the point of death and in the afterlife after tasting death, we shall be alone with our sustainer. In fact, even in this world, we are alone with our sustainer. Each and every one of us are direct recipients of this religion, this system, and recipients of Muhammad, the conduit of the Quran, and Allah. We don't need a mediator. There is no such thing as a formal legal opinion of an Islamic law by an Islamic scholar in religion. Opinions are not an excuse, and they won't save you in the afterlife. Opinions are not substantial. The intimates of Rasul Allah only expressed their personal views on a matter. They did not give a formal opinion. One may say, according to my understanding, this is how topic X may be construed. But one may not enforce or legally bind anyone to their way. They can only advise people to follow the way of the Quran and Muhammad, peace be upon him. There is a place to express one's views on a matter in religion. As all the great saints and scholars of the past, people of the truth, who had attained the essence of reality, expressed their views on certain matters too, you resort to and embrace their views. I never once in my life showed esteem to the views of any sheikh or scholar who gave religious opinions in the palaces of sultans. I have always endeavored to understand and know the value of the pure lives led by the intimates of Muhammad, peace be upon him, who expected no material gain, who lived their lives based on the principle of giving without expecting anything in return. Those are the people whose views I have benefited from. Make use of them. Utilize their views, but know that nobody's religious opinion will save you tomorrow because there is no such thing as a formal religious opinion in the system. One religious group may advocate one view, another group may advocate another. While such and such school may believe in yet another thing, that is fine. But a life spent engaged in such rumors will get you nowhere. For example, 99% of Turkey's population today is Muslim. Ask them which school of religion they are from. They will say Hanafi. But what is the difference between Hanafi and Shafi? Or the difference between Hanafi and Hanbali? What makes Hanafi Hanafi? What makes a Shafi Shafi? Ask them which belief system do you follow in your faith? A Shari or Maturidi? They have probably never heard of these terms in their lives. The notion of a school in faith doesn't exist either. These are outdated notions. What we have to do is put aside all hearsay, forget about which Imam said what, and use our own minds, our own understanding, our own comprehension and intellect to discern these matters by starting from the beginning and inquiring and researching. We have no other choice. Everyone is a university graduate nowadays. They've all got big jobs, big ranks, big earnings, and big reputations. We spend our whole lives to earn these big things that we're going to leave behind when we go. How can we both believe in life after death and not make any inquisition about the nature of this place that we believe we will inevitably go to one day. Based on supposedly religious hearsay obtained from the village in which we're born, our town and community, the imam of our local mosque, etc. How can we think we know our religion? We are putting our eternal afterlife into peril. There is only one rule that applies to the afterlife. Every single person will live the consequences of their own doings. Nobody can run to the aid of another person. Allah never employs cruelty. Now that all of this has been clearly outlined, is it not 
time to start inquiring and examining about the hereafter? I'm not saying come be my student or follow me. You have no business with me. I already told you. I'm closing my shutters and retreating. After I explain the topic on Salat, I will withdraw once again. Like I had done for years, I will disengage again. But you all have a big responsibility on your shoulders. You are going to live after death. You are going to travel to a completely new environment all on your own. So, if you are not adequately preparing for that place, then you are going to have a hard time, my friends. Go to my site. Or go to www.okunusum.com and read up. There are loads of scientific information there about the brain, about man. All the newest findings of the West can be found on this site. I recommend you to visit the site www.okunusum.com Though it's not my own site, all the scientific findings and news about technological developments, theoretical physics, etc., that we find get published there. There are no unanswered questions. If you would prefer to hear my view on things, then go to www.amedhalusi.org backslash en. If you would prefer to hear them in their original or watch their original videos in English, then go to www.okunosum.com. It's all about getting rid of the fallacious notion we've obtained somehow about God or Allah being up in the heavens. In regards to this subject, I especially recommend two of my books. One, Muhammad's Allah, To what did Muhammad read? Since he didn't receive a written note from the heavens, what was actually he asked to read with the command, read? What did he read? These two books will answer some of the most fundamental topics in a very clear and definitive way. About the brain, the most crucial thing is Whatever you do, stay away from things that harm your brain, such as alcohol, drugs, and cigarettes. The most precious treasure and the most valuable asset given to you in this world is your brain. Nothing is more precious than a healthy brain. You can never reverse the damage you cause to your brain. It can't be fixed. Many people today are suffering the damage they've afflicted upon their brains with the use of wrong substances. Oh, I can't remember this. I just don't get this. I always get stuck here. Look at the state I've fallen to, etc. Are all the resulting damages of smoking, drugs, and alcohol. Just as tipping a glass of water or even a few drops of liquid on an electronic kit is detrimental to its circuitry and causes it to become dysfunctional, so too these toxic substances damage the brain in irreversible ways. And all of this is now 100% medically proven. Please, whatever you do, do not damage your brain. 